So, this one? And all that one? Well, this one even. Help! Hey, and welcome to Solving. I think the most frequent type of posts I see on r slash After Effects is, is this computer any good? Or some variation. So I've decided to do a deep dive to back up what I've learned from years of using After Effects. I've used Adobe's own help pages, their hardware forum, and I contacted Kevin Monaghan, senior community specialist at Adobe. You'll be hearing quotes from Kevin throughout. I'm going to try to answer questions like, which is better, more RAM or more cores? Is a slower processor with more cores better than a faster one with fewer? Do NVIDIA GPUs still have an edge over AMD? For After Effects. And is it better to have a laptop with more RAM, but only one hard drive, or a desktop with less RAM, but space to upgrade? I've put what I found into a spreadsheet scorecard, where you'll be able to plug in computer deals and see if that helps your decision. But first, we need to understand how After Effects works in order to understand how hardware can make a difference. After Effects is not a video editor like Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve. An NLE uses proxy video for instant playback. Then during rendering, it references the individual clips and their edit points to assemble the final video. After Effects works differently. It takes a frame and renders it, then it stores it in its RAM. It then builds the final output from these stored frames. This is massively under-explaining how AE works. But it should be enough to illustrate why playback is not always real-time in AE. And it gives us some clues as to what to prioritize when looking for a computer. It's always been about the RAM. You know what I mean? You always have to have lots and lots of RAM um, in order to cache those frames in and preview, preview them. So I would say that not only do you need um, more RAM than you think, <laughs> get as much as you can, as much as your, your machine will will hold. If it's a desktop, get 128 gigs of RAM. If it's a, if it's a laptop, see if you can cram 64 in there, 32 minimum, you know. On Adobe's requirements page, the minimum recommended is 16 gigabytes. As Kevin says, 32 gigabytes really should be your floor. RAM is harder to swap out than a new GPU or HDD, especially if you're not interested or comfortable in tinkering with your computer. The more RAM you have, the more future-proof you'll make it. My own PC was built in 2022 and has 64 gigabytes and is still going strong. However, in version 25.2, Adobe introduced a new feature called High Performance Preview Playback, or HPPP, which makes AE less dependent on RAM. It allows previews to be stored on fast SSDs instead. While AE had a form of this before, HPPP is different. And while you used to need to have a high performance processor in order to support a stupid amount of RAM, if you now have NVMe or SSD storage as your cache drive, then you can get away with a smaller amount of RAM and still have the same preview range. So that's good. But personally, I suggest as much RAM as you can get. Puget Systems have done a huge amount of research into After Effects and even introduced a benchmarking tool. Obviously, this is not something you can easily run on a computer you're considering buying, but can highlight your current setup. They also regularly benchmark processors. I'm no Linus Tech Tips, but ultimately, I think it's clear that the CPU manufacturer doesn't really make much difference. That was not always the case, with Intel being most After Effects' favorite. But the data doesn't lie. Clock speed is still important, and with multi-frame rendering, After Effects can use multiple cores. A higher core CPU speed is better than getting the one that has the most multi-CPU capabilities. School of Motion posted this quote in an article on the topic Higher CPU speeds are better than more cores for After Effects. Even with multi-frame rendering, CPU speed often trumps core count, but a balance between the two is more important now than it used to be. While Apple's M3 is way down the list, plenty of users still prefer a Mac's all-in-one-place ecosystem. Adobe community expert Warren Heaton has some solid advice for Mac buyers on this thread. In summary then, processor brand is not nearly as important as it used to be. And clock speed, the gigahertz measure, is more important than number of cores. Both NVIDIA and AMD offer powerful GPUs, but NVIDIA's RTX series tends to have an edge in professional applications and driver support, 
which might be more beneficial for your dual focus on gaming and graphic design. For general work in After Effects, Adobe's requirements page suggests your GPU needs to have a minimum of 4GB of VRAM or 6GB if you're working in 4K. But all the new advanced 3D features have their own limitations. There's too much to go into here, but this page on Adobe's help is being kept up to date. At the time of writing, you can see there are a lot of supported cards, but not all. Currently, Intel Mac GPUs are not supported, for example. If you only bookmark one web page after this video, this is the one. It's a quick reference that could save you a lot of heartache. In terms of manufacturer, well, Nvidia still tends to hold an edge, though the gap is not universal and features continue evolving. After Effects supports DirectX, OpenCL, CUDA, and Metal to varying degrees. But this post from Forum Legend RJL is quite concerning regarding what it means for AMD GPUs. AMD has deprecated OpenCL, which is now stuck on OpenCL 2.0, which is now 12 years old for its gaming GPUs, in favour of the new ROCKM API. And since there are currently no known plans for Adobe to support ROCKM for GPU acceleration, the next major release of Premiere Pro may require OpenCL 3.0 or higher support, thereby locking the Mercury Playback Engine MPE to the software-only rendering mode when an AMD GPU is installed. Puget Systems 3D benchmarking confirms this, with even the 8GB GeForce RTX 4060 outperforming a 24GB AMD Radeon RX 7900. The most surprising thing I got from these test results is that the Apple MacBook Pro M3 Max tops the 2D benchmark after being at the bottom of the 3D one. This is partly down to how the MacBook uses the CPU as well. But if you are more focused on traditional 2D compositing or motion graphics, this might be the deciding factor for you. Oh, and one last thing to mention about NVIDIA GPUs, you should run them in studio mode if possible, instead of the game ready mode. In the NVIDIA app, go to the drivers tab, and then in the drop down, select studio driver. Game ready means the GPU focuses more on live performance, whereas studio leans into stability. You can only run one driver at a time, of course, and switching will trigger an install. So if you are looking for a games machine that can also run After Effects, you probably want to stick with game ready drivers. As far as the disk caching goes, yeah, you want some kind of uh, a second hard drive. You want a fast secondary drive other than your main hard drive where your application lies and your projects lie probably. Uh, and uh, that's probably the best advice I can give you. Uh, One thing everyone agrees on is that you need a second hard drive to act as a media cache. In fact, Adobe goes so far as to say ideally it will be NVMe or SSD. Stay away from any spinning disks. I agree with Kevin here. If you're looking at drives for caching, avoid HDD. They're just slower. Fine for storage and for holding media, of course. Also, SSDs last longer. If you're working on a network, be wary of that because that will slow down your um, workflow, I think. It's fine for storage. It's fine for um, keeping um, archiving and stuff. But for uh, when you're working on a project, you want everything to be local. That's my other opinion. Really good point, that one. If you're working in a situation where files are expected to be stored on a network, go and beg your IT support for a local solution. In most cases, they will resist, but any network interruption can screw up a render. I know from experience. <laughs> Even a USB drive is preferable. Just make sure it's also SSD. So, in summary, the amount of RAM remains the most important element. Processor speed beats number of cores, NVIDIA is the best GPU option, and a second hard drive should be viewed as a minimum requirement. So where does that leave us? Here's my scorecard as a spreadsheet. You can download a copy from the link in the description. On the primary tab, we have a list of five computers. I grabbed the details of five options from a UK high street retailer. I've added in cells for the RAM, CPU brand, number of cores, CPU speed, GPU brand, amount of VRAM, whether the hard drive is SSD, and if it comes with a second drive. And I've got the price. These are in British pounds, but obviously there's no currency waiting. The final cell score contains a formula. It takes each of the row's cells 
and does various things to them to generate a total score. You can determine what each score should be using the other tabs. Because RAM is generally a high number, we don't need to add much weighting to that score. 64 gigabytes will add 64 points to the score, compared to just 16 points for a 16 gigabyte machine. And likewise all the way down. You'll see though, there is a bonus if the computer has more than 20 gigabytes. And of course, this scorecard doesn't take into account operating system preferences or other uses of the computer. You may need portability and have to only look at laptops, for example. Or budget for that matter. If the computers you can afford only score 150 points but can run After Effects, then they are still valid choices. No doubt, as soon as I publish this video, there will be lots of opinions about how wrong I've got everything. And that's what the comments are for. I'd really like this to become a community resource. Please help me make this scorecard better.